Okay, so now we're going to be talking about the empirical rule. Very, very important. Now, this is we're going to talk a little more depth in a few units. We're going to call that um, normal distribution. But for right now, let me just call empirical rule. We're going to be looking at this data. If I look on my numbers, and I, as you guys see my notation at the bottom, here's my mean in the center. Right, we, we call that Greek letter mu, but that represents our, our average, our mean, right? So the mu is in the center. And then I here to the right, I have one standard deviation, two standard deviation, three standard deviation. Remember that that little symbol next to the one, two, and three is what we call sigma. Sigma squared is what we call variance. Remember, we talk about variance. Now, uh, just the sigma, not squared, just the sigma, we call that standard deviation. Remember, standard deviation was the square root of the variance. We, you know, we worked some of that last week, so we're, we should be good. We should know how to do those. But notice how to the left of my average, I have negative one standard deviation, negative two standard deviation, negative three standard deviation, so on and so forth. Now, the empirical rule, some people also call it the 68, 95, and 99.7 rule. What? Okay, let me write this thing down. Some people call it the 68, the 95, and the 99.7 rule. Okay, now what does this thing mean? Okay, what this thing says is that 68%, notice I'm, I'm gonna be using these numbers on the, on the list, 68% is in between negative one variance and positive one variance. I mean, negative one standard deviation and positive one standard deviation. So between this number and this number, we have 68% of our answers of our population. Hmm, 68% being between those. So I'm gonna say each of these spaces is 34%. Okay, so we that's 68%. Now 95, what does this 95 mean? Let me use green in this case. 95, the second number, that means it says that 95 of our population is, be, is in between a negative two standard deviation and a positive two standard deviation. 95% of our answers are in between those two. Okay, interesting. So I'm going to say, okay, so there's 95, right? 95 altogether. 95. Let me take away 68 because I already did this. You know, 68 in the middle. 95 minus 68 is 27. Okay, so I have to split my 27% in between this space and this space. Okay, so 27 divided by 2. That's 13.5. Good. So I'm going to say this space right here has 13.5%. And this right here has 13.5%. Altogether, if I add all my numbers there, right? 13.5 plus 34 plus 34 plus 13.5, it is 95. So I do have, let me raise this up here for space purpose. So I do have 95% of my population there. Good. Now the 99.7, some of you might be like, um, I think I know what this means. Okay, yeah, 99.7, what the empirical rule says, 99.7% of, of, of our population is in between negative three standard deviation and positive three standard deviation. Okay, so all of this is 99.7, right? Let me just go 99.7. I know the first, the four in the center is 95% already. Let me subtract those. So I get 2.7. I mean, 4.7. Okay, now 4.7 is split between this space and this space. 
Okay, so let me divide this. 4.7 divided by 2 will give me 2.35. Let me erase this right here. So let me call this 2.35. And this this 2.35% in there. Okay, so what about the outsides? Like this space and this space. Well, 99.7 is inside. So what do I need to complete for what 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 do I need to complete a hundred? Well, 0 0.3 probably, right? Okay, so I'm gonna say here on to the right, we have 0 0.15%, and here to the left I have 0 0.15%. Not that much. Now, uh, believe me, this is actually used a lot. When I when I look at my classes, when I give you guys assessment or quizzes and tests, I do put a list of my of your scores. I do put on the list of my of your scores, and I I see where sixty eight percent of you land in. What are your scores in? And I'm like, okay, uh, am I comfortable with that? Good. Am I going to have everybody in my classes get 100% or really good grades on my test? Not really. I'm going to have everybody get bad grades? Not really. I'm seeing where 68% of you land in. Okay, so now, how do we use this, Mr. Leon? So how do we use this? Now, this is how we're going to be using. Let me come up with some examples. Let me erase this right here. I might tell you, okay, so on your homework, I might tell you, you have some studies, and let's say your average, your average is 40. And then your standard deviation, your standard deviation is, let's say, 5. So you're looking, okay, so what th these numbers mean for right now, this is 40, this is 45, this is 50, this is 55. Now to the left, this is 35, this is 30, and this is 25. So notice how I use the mean and the standard deviation. The mean in the center, and then I start going plus one standard deviation, plus two standard deviation, so on and so forth. Now, I'm going to give you the mean or the mu. We call the mu or the mean and the standard deviation. And then I'm going to ask you, what's the percentage? What's the percentage of the people that land in between 35 through, let's say, what? Uh, let's say 50. So I'm going to say, well, how many people do you have in between 35 and 50? So let me take a look at this. Uh, let's use red. I find 35. 35 is right here. 50 is right here. So what's the percentage of people that are in between 35 and 50? So you're going to add those two, those three numbers in there. And in this case, there's three numbers. So 34 plus 34 plus 13.5. Then I'm going to say 81.5%. Not too bad, right? I could have said, how many people are in between 30 and 40? Or what's the percentage that you have in between 40 and 55? What's the percent? I could give, I could ask you in between any of these values. I could also ask you, what's the percentage that are 45 or higher? Ooh, that's interesting. Here's 45 or higher. So in this case, I will go 13.5 plus 2.35 plus 0 0.15. Good. That's not that bad. Then I might even ask you. I might even ask you to use this this uh thing in here, and I'm gonna ask you. Okay, let's say, let's say sixty eight percent. So let me write this thing down here on the left. Let me come up with a different example. 
Um, should we use 68? Yeah, let's use 68. Let's say 68% of, of our population are in between 23 through, uh, let's see, what's that, uh, 37? So you're going to say, okay, what's a 68% of our population in between 23 and 37? Okay, so this is a different example. So 68%. Okay, so that means this is 23 and this is 37. Then I might ask you, well, what's the mean? We can figure out. We can figure out, I can ask you, what's the mean? Give me what's the mean and what's the standard deviation? 68% of our population are between 23 and 37. Now the mean is pretty simple to figure out. I'm asking what number is in between 23 and 37? We can probably think like, oh, I, I know which number it is. If we cannot figure it out, the way we, we don't know which number is in between 23 and 37, I'm just going to do the average of the two. Let me add my two numbers, 23 plus 37, that's 60, divided by 2 gives me 30. So my mean or my mu is 30. Yeah, 30 is the number right in between 23 and 37. So I could ask you for the mu. Now, what's the standard deviation? Well, what's the difference between the mu and a number to the right or a number to the left. And I'm asking that distance, so the it's a it's a positive value. Remember distance, we always uh, measure it in uh, as a positive value. This is what, remember when you talk about absolute value, we used to call that the distance from zero. So distance is always a positive value, no matter if you go to the right or to the left. I'm just asking how many spaces, or what's the number that you either added or subtracted and in this case, it's going to be 7. My standard deviation is 7. Because you either went 30 plus 7 to get 37, or you went 30 minus 7 to get 23. So these are the two examples you're going to see. You're going to play with those. And once again, if you need any help, remember I'm just an email away.